Welcome to our empty docs again. Today we'll be covering one of the classical algorithms for unsupervised sentence alignment, the Galen Church aligner. It's not the best algorithm for the task, but it is very much language independent. As a motivating example, let's have a look at this book which is written both in English and Hindi. It was manually aligned at the level of segments or sentences by our colleagues in the project Intercorp, and obviously they knew Hindi. I wouldn't be able to do that at all because I barely recognize individual characters in the Devanagari script. So now we are supposed to do the alignments in an unsupervised fashion without any human guidance. We could look at the individual words, but that would be difficult. What we instead do is we look on the text from very far away and we spot the clear characteristic in the text. Matching segments are of similar length. The Gale and Church alignment algorithm is a nice example of dynamic programming style. All the algorithm sees are the length of the source sentences and the target sentences. The algorithm considers a matrix of all partial solutions, where the empty solution, where nothing was aligned to anything yet, is uh, the top left corner, and the final solution will be found when the, cell, uh, when the last cell is filled um, at the end of the table. This table is gradually filled from top to bottom or diagon diagonally. If you are familiar with the string at a distance algorithm, you'll see that this is very similar to that case. In the string edit distance algorithms, there are three allowed operations. This arrow corresponds to the insertion of a character, and in our case, it would be an insertion of the sentence. So there was no sentence traversed on the source side, uh, but there was one sentence produced on the target side, a zero, a zero to one alignment. This arrow is the deletion. We have traversed one sentence in the source, and we haven't produced any sentence in the target. And this uh, arc is the one-to-one -one alignment when these two sentences match exactly. In this particular example, we see that this is a very long sentence and this is a rather short sentence. So these two are probably not a good match. Therefore, the Gellin Church algorithm allows also other moves. And one of those extra moves is this two-to-two move. So this two to two move says that these two sentences together correspond to these two target sentences together. And here, the sum of the lengths actually matches. This is a short and long, and this is long and short. So we can assume that these are good translations of each other. There are two other types of moves allowed by the Gale and Church algorithm. One of them is one to two alignment. So consuming one sentence in the source and producing two in the target and the other is two to one, consuming two sentences in the source and producing one in the target. So when filling the value for this cell, we consider all the six allowed moves and write down here what is the cheapest score of those six possible ways how to get to this point. And then this cell serves as the input point for other traverses. We gradually fill the whole table and when we reach the final point, we know what is the cheapest alignment price, uh, so to say. And to get uh, the actual alignment, we just traverse back uh, and see how the minimum was reached. So how do we score the segments? Gale and Church define the distance measure using the probability uh, of two segments being a good match given the difference in length, the delta. And to convert the probability to a distance measure, we need to take the log of that because we'll be summing these values along the path in the dynamic search style. And we also need to take the negation of that because the higher uh, the probability of the match, the lower should be the cost in the search. This delta, the difference in length, is normalized so that it, uh, the mean is zero, even if uh, one of the languages uses more characters on average than the other for, uh, for a particular message. And the same uh, type of normalization is used for the variance. Empirical observation confirms that each star here corresponds to one aligned segment pair in, in Gale and Church data. And we see that most of the segments uh, have equal lengths, uh, but there is some variance to that. And this curve is the actual curve used in the algorithm, which matches very well with, with the empirical observation. 
So how is then this probability of a match given the distance defined? Gale and Church do proper probabilistic reasoning, but we can summarize uh, that they uh, simply use two components uh, of the probability. One of the components uh, describes our surprise uh, of seeing a particular difference in length, assuming that the two segments matched well. And the other component is a prior probability of the match. And here again, Gale and Church look at the data. So they observe that for a particular type of a match, one sentence to one sentence, or one sentence being inserted, or one sentence being deleted, uh, there is a particular probability of, of this uh, happening. So in their bank reports, about 90% of sentences align well, one to one. Uh, and the rest uh, is for other cases considered by the algorithm. Dropping one sentence uh, on one language or the other, uh, or merging two sentences into one, uh, or splitting one sentence into two, or mapping two sentences to uh, two sentences uh, in one step. In our empirical data in the English Hindi text that we have seen before, uh, we see that the uh, probabilities are distributed slightly differently. Uh, our uh, best case is uh, again one to one sentence alignment, but it doesn't cover 90% of cases, but rather only 65% of cases. And uh, obviously there also happen more complicated alignments than those uh, examined uh, and considered by the Galen Church aligner. We have uh, sometimes three sentences matching one, and other cases uh, up to six sentences matching one in the source language. To summarize, the distance measure has two components. One is the probability that considers the difference in length uh, of the two segments, and another one is the uh, probability, the prior uh, probability of the match, uh, which considers just the match type, whether it's one to one sentence alignment or two to one in, in other cases. And then there is the dynamic search. And in case you were wondering how to code this, the printed Gale and Church paper in computational linguistics actually contains the C source code. So that's it for today. We've covered the classical algorithm for sentence alignment by Gale and Church. And we highly recommend that you actually go to our website and take the exercise, implement it yourself, and have it tested in our code examiner. More details on our webpage. Next time, we'll be aligning words within sentences.